Welcome to the downtown area of Colorado Springs. This is the place that is really growing. Yes, the north and the northeast side of Colorado Springs is it's expanding. They're building more houses out there. But what's really, if you haven't been to Colorado Springs in the last five to seven years, and your only experience was before that, you really probably wouldn't even recognize this place. There's so much growth happening down here that's really finally, finally turning Colorado Springs into a cultural center. It's where we're getting new restaurants, new food, new activities. Actually, I'm standing outside of one of them right now, but what we're gonna show you today for Explore Colorado Springs, I'm Kyle. We're gonna show you the downtown Colorado Springs neighborhood. It's a little less a neighborhood and more just an area, but there are a couple. It starts up at Fillmore, goes down to kind of where I-25 kind of like bends to the Southeast-ish. And what we're gonna show you is why this area of Colorado Springs is really changing a lot. We're starting to experience tons of growth. Here we've got Widener Field. So we've got the uh, Colorado Springs switchbacks, the semi-pro MLS, or hello, semi-pro soccer team, not the MLS team. Across the street, we've got the Olympic Center. We've got Denver Biscuit Company right up the street. You've seen that whole street before down on Tejon. Um, Fat Sully's, Great Pizza, The Exchange. There's so much just in this little downtown area. And this is what's really, I love to use the word revitalizing this town. This is where people want to be. This is the place that like you're really just drawn to. Because honestly, the North End, it's all chains. It's all chains and big box stores. So this is the place that we want to be. Today, we're going to take you around and show you why it's growing, what's awesome about this area, and uh, what's making it super unique and changing from what you might have experienced before in Colorado Springs. So welcome back if you're not new to the channel. If you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we talk about everything related where to live, work, eat, play. We are Explore Colorado Springs. My name's Sam, this is Francis. And today we're talking about everything downtown and everything there is to do around downtown. But if you're considering making that move here anytime in the near future, make sure to reach out to us. We're licensed realtors here in the state of Colorado. We'd love to be able to help you out. We got people reaching out to us all the time looking to make that move here. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out. All our info is down in the description box. You got any questions, leave us a comment in the comment section. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you get all the notifications every time we upload a new video. But what are we gonna be talking about? We're talking about what there is to do around downtown. So you got the intro from Kyle. Francis and I are gonna tell you about everything there is to do around here. Yeah, so you're thinking about moving to downtown and you wanna know, like, you wanna be where the action is, right? So what does that entail? Well, we've got the restaurants. We've got nightclubs here. Um, so I'm gonna be honest with you. Don't really go to nightclubs, not really my jive. No. But we do have several. There is Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, there's Blondies. Yeah. There is the Mansion. Yep. Um, now you probably have more experience with talking about. Let's hear like a crazy story from Cowboys. Oh man, Cowboys is like prime people watching mm -hmm. territory. Like, if you're an enthusiastic fan of people watching, like I am, Cowboys is your spot because mm -hmm. it's a three tiered bar. Um, and it's open air on like the second tier. So you can see like down onto the floor and stuff like that. I've definitely seen uh, some gentlemen um, that were causing problems be carried out uh, by all four limbs face down um, by the bouncers, you know, like, yeah. like, like lambs being picked up like, you know, and just carried right out or whatever. That's it's hilarious. But for me personally, like the nightlife around here, I like a slower pace when I'm going out at night. Definitely. So I like things like this spot, the garden, um, got a really, really cool, like outdoor space here, really good food, really good drinks. Um, I like Kawadi places like that. Yeah. Um, I think we've taken you to Kawadi before, so we'll link that if we can, but um, Kawadi is like another indoor but open air food market that has just some of the most delicious food in the city. My favorite spot in there is Anju. It's uh, Korean street food. Um, they have Hawaiian barbecue in there, Texas Creole. Mm -hmm. My favorite brewery is there, Pikes Peak Brewery. So um, that's that's my kind of like pace of, pace of play, if you will, yeah. if I'm going out for the evening as spots like that. Yeah, yeah. Kawadi is probably my go to for, you know, hanging out in downtown. Uh, you've got a couple good breweries down here. You've got Pikes Peak uh, Lager House, right? Yep. Pikes Peak Brewing, whatever. 
Yep. Uh, Mash Mechanics is also a fantastic brewery. They have like bands and stuff come out there and play. Yeah. Uh, like you said, we're standing in front of the garden. There's another <laughs> restaurant right across the street here called White Pie. Um, it's actually owned by another, uh, they have kind of like a chain, I don't want to say chain of restaurants, but a local restaurant group. Um, they also own Sushi Row. It's a mm. fantastic newer sushi joint here in town. They got a really great atmosphere and the patio opens up. So even if you're sitting inside, you kind of feel like you're sitting outside. Yeah. Um, Dos Dos is a great taco spot here in town. Really a lot more traditional style tacos. So not like, you know, your torchies, you know, fuzzies, like real, just really good traditional tacos. Their spicy margarita is fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think of what other spots I really like. You know, they closed my my Irish my Irish restaurant. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's Folklore. another uh, chef here, uh, Chef Luck, who owns several joints around town. Um, Four Bread Brother Luck is like a very upscale mm -hmm. restaurant here in town. They do. I don't even think there's a menu. You just you sit down and they have a prep prepared like four course uh, meal for you. Yeah. So definitely a great spot for anniversary or special nights out. Yeah. Um, some other There's little... a few of those like kind of fine dining places all yeah. throughout town. McKinsey's, um, shout out McKinsey's. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy the rabbit hole. I know yeah. that's a that's a spot that Kyle absolutely loves too. Yes, the rabbit hole is cool. Um, man. Oh, Jack's Fish and Oyster yes. House. We'd be remiss oh, if we didn't man. mention Jack's Oyster Fish yes. and Oyster House. Yes. If you want to know a little bit more about them, we do have a completely separate video that we'll link in the description. But they have got, you don't think of seafood when you come to Colorado. I mean, we're completely landlocked here. You know, maybe yeah. some trout, yeah. but no, they've got fresh flown in oysters every week. And I'm not even really an oyster guy. And those were like, those are pretty delicious. fantastic. The seafood yeah. there is just, it's, exceptional. it's delicious. There's it's so exceptional. many places down here. Um, that was really loud. There's so many places down here that we'd love to throw on the list. Mm -hmm. And we keep going for like 20 minutes, but we don't want to make the neighborhood tour that long. Yeah. Um, but all in all, like Colorado Springs really did used to be kind of this sort of lame place. Like there were a lot of chain restaurants and like just not a lot of things to do. Downtown now is, is not like that. It's full of like craft, local, delicious places whatever your fix is like you can find it down here yeah and if you want some more restaurant recommendations definitely check out our relocation guide mm -hmm. in the description below we've got all of our restaurant recommendations there and i know some other people on the team have been crapping on my recommendations recently so just don't listen to them it's good stuff i promise i'm gonna update it um but yeah that's pretty much what there is to do in downtown colorado springs uh, if you are interested in checking it out, I'd be more than happy to, or any of us would be more than happy to kind of show you around, show you our favorite spots. But let's hit the next segment of the uh, restaurant tour, or sorry, neighborhood tour. All right, everybody, we are downtown Colorado Springs still, but a little bit different area. We're gonna tell you about the recreational opportunities in and around or close to the downtown area here in Colorado Springs. We're in front of one of my personal favorite stores in Colorado Springs, the Mount Chalet. I believe, Kyle, you've probably been in this store, have you not? I go in this store like on a weekly basis. It <laughs> is like the best store here. Yeah. They've got, man, like, there's, you've got your REI, your Shields, those types of stores in Colorado Springs, also sure. kind of the big ones. But Mount Chalet, they're just a local store. I try to support local as much as I can, but if you want quality climbing, expedition gear, backcountry skiing, regular skiing, rock climbing, I mean, anything you can think of, this is a place to go, hands down, no doubt about it. But not just the gear, it is the staff. The staff is what makes this place exceptional because number one when you come in here like multiple times like I did, <laughs> they they know who you are they know what you've looked at they know what you like they understand your climbing level or your skiing level or whatever it is but what is even more important is that look no shade to rei but sometimes when you go into rei you're just talking to another employee they don't know the specifics of the gear you're asking about what sport it is you're really doing i feel like sometimes they don't even know <laughs> no <clears throat> That's how I feel about it. <laughs> it feels like, terrible. Me up. Oh gosh, sorry. Okay, but when you come in here though, it's like you're getting, cause first, I mean, it's not that the people that are, I don't, <clears throat> but here they're all like, they're all out doing expeditions and skiing and rock climbing and doing these things. And when you talk to them, they've all, they've tried all their gear, they've used it all. And they really like, okay, when I got my, they're the only people that I will trust to, to fit ski boots. 
I can see ski that. Ski boots, yeah. snowboard boots. They're yeah, the yeah. only people. Um, when you talk to them about climbing shoes, right? It's like shoes are like so important when you're doing outdoor activities. We talk to them about climbing shoes. Like they have like good recommendations based on skill level, what style you climb, your skill level in skiing, what style. And when you have them do work, so a great example of this is uh, we had some skis that we took to mm, REI, sorry. And we just, you know, ran them through the machine, uh, but I actually had paid for like their, what was supposed to be like their super nice tune. And unfortunately when we got the skis back, uh, Lauren just couldn't ski anymore. Like they weren't and usable basically. Snowboard, right. we were snowboarding. Yeah. yeah, she couldn't like snowboard anymore, which is crazy because she's like better than I am. And she would just go and we'd be like on a cat track and she would just whoop, just like slip out hit the dirt every time difference, man. and yeah. so what happened is we brought them here and they looked at it like finer and it had like waves throughout the whole thing they had over gutted yeah, it yeah. They, they had just done it so poorly and they just like kept it for a week and they're the only ones like that were able to like fix it and yeah. actually get it ready to go so they're the only place that i'll take really any of my gear to anymore i'm yeah. having some skis uh the skins cut skins, right now yeah there you go yeah. anyway mountain chile it's also the oldest local locally owned mountain shop in colorado in colorado right yeah which is pretty cool so this is right here on uh nevada on? nevada on nevada yeah and it's right next to city rock a climbing gym how convenient yeah city rock is super awesome i think it's the best climbing gym in town if i'm being totally honest it's where i go uh super great staff super they're always changing routes they're always doing events um they're they're just it's just a really great environment and right next to it is the ute restaurant um which has a bunch of good food and beers and stuff like that it's not a brewery so it's not like craft stuff but um really cool location so otherwise from this downtown area which we're like nevada and kiowa's yeah is where we're at ish yes. you do have the little park over there acacia park yep yep and then I guess there, there's still some open spaces like around this area. Yeah, you've got Acacia Park, Monument Valley Park is kind of, it's kind of follows a long I-25, but pickleball courts, swimming pool, oh, yeah. playground, all that stuff. It backs up to Colorado College campus and like their football practice, or not football practice field, soccer practice field where their track is and everything. So that's a pretty cool area, nice good green space down there. You're right by, is that Fountain Creek? The creek, you're right by the creek. So yeah, it's nice. You got some water right there. So that's a really cool open space and all that's right in downtown, but it's not just what is in downtown, it's what you're close to. Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, right here, like I'm not looking at the camera, right there, I'm staring at Pikes Peak right between these two buildings. Yeah. So you're, I mean, a five minute drive over to Red Rocks open space. You can, you know, they've got pre-bolted routes you can climb over there. There's trails you can mountain bike, run on, all that stuff. And there's just a myriad of trails and things to do right outside of downtown on the foothills. Yeah, you're also, then if you're five minutes to that, then you're seven minutes to the incline. Um, so like the whole Manitou Springs area. And yep. really, again, I think like this is the part of Colorado Springs that people are just out walking the streets. Yeah. Right. So like not recreation related, but one street over Tejon is probably like the busiest pedestrian street. I would, yeah. I would wager is maybe that versus colorado avenue what i would actually probably say tejon because there's like i think so too more businesses there like yep. people because like lunchtime man tejon is packed oh, yeah. it's shops restaurants i know the other guys talked to them about restaurants but yeah it's just a ton of stuff right on tejon yeah lots yeah. of like little boutique um shops for clothing yep. uh, art there's really cool place called eclectic which is just like a bunch oh, yeah, of yeah. local artists that like don't have their own shop and so they just bring everything into this one spot um and then like Literally, like, they've got their 10 pieces and then another artist has theirs. Right, so it's a yeah. really cool spot. Anywho, so the, the downtown area, I, I think you hit it, is that it's like it's proximity 100%, to yeah. everything. But even in the downtown area, like it's where we come to do our rock climbing, to get our, get our mountain gear. fix, to get our yep. gear and stuff like that. And like from here, it just like propels you right into the mountains. And this is the last thing I'm gonna say about this is I live on the Southeast side of town. And when I come home on 24 and I come past through Woodland Park and then past Manatee Springs, I'm like, oh, I'm back home. Psych. <laughs> no, I'm not. I saw like 25 or 30 minutes to drive That's home. And it's idea. so annoying versus from here. I mean, you're home. Yeah. You come back through the mountains from your day trip to, to the ski resorts or anything. And it's like you're back yeah like, you really can't ask for anything. you don't have to fight that eastern colorado springs jibber jabber traffic yeah, yeah that just so sucks annoying. so yeah downtown proximity also stuff to do here 
recreationally, man, I don't think you beat it. You can't. So have you been wondering what sort of housing and living amenities there are around the downtown area for this whole video now? Yes. Well, yes, I have. You have? Okay, awesome, <laughs> wonderful. Here we are in one of the most quintessential, charming, cute little neighborhoods surrounding downtown Colorado Springs. This is called Old North End. If you look around, you can see why people love living in this area. It's beautiful here. Mature trees lining the sidewalks and the roads, old homes with all sorts of just amazing character built in all sorts of different time periods. Kyle, what's the Google machine say about kind of average housing price points here? <laughs> wow. It ain't pretty no. for uh, for your everyday person. But um, we saw upwards of a median price of $880,000 yeah. for your median price here. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense. Um, actually, I was just looking for right now, middle of October, mm -hmm. um, just to see what was available. There's like one house available. And I don't even know if it would technically even be considered old Colorado uh, or old North End, excuse me, because it was kind of like, quite a few blocks that way and it was like at 700,000. Yeah. So the houses here are are typically they're not huge. Yeah. There are some pretty big like they oh, almost yeah. look like manors. Oh yeah. Right? Is yeah. That, that's the word I would use. Yeah, right now we're on Wood Avenue, right? Yep. And Wood Avenue just down a few blocks from us is kind of the old like millionaires row. Oh yeah. Right. Super close to CC, just beautiful neighborhood. Um, those are like some of your more mansion style kind of homes. Yep. Like there's one down there called the Sharps Mansion. Oh. Sold at like 3.6 million the last time it sold, something casual. ridiculous totally like that. Yeah. But over here on wood, they're more like cottage size. Yep. Um, in fact, this like this one that we're walking by right now is like the perfect like depiction of a cottage. Yep. But it's, uh, What's really cool about this neighborhood though is like, like you said, you have these big old trees. Everyone's got like great landscaping. The roads are actually wider than I would have expected. Oh, yeah. And even though the roads are wide, the houses are still set back mm -hmm. quite a ways from the road. So they're not like right on the road. Yeah. Uh, there still seems plenty of space. As you can hear, like it's still really quiet. Yeah. You can hear, you, you can, can hear I-25, yeah. like the little hum of it, but yeah. it's not like, it's not super obnoxious. It's not a no. terribly loud noise. That's the other thing people love about this area. Like you're still in the heart of downtown, but you're getting away from all the noise yeah. and the busyness and you know, all that sort of thing. Well, it, Along, doesn't, it doesn't feel like you're in like a downtown. Right. Though. No, it, it totally feels like you're in like, I don't know, the most charming little, like almost like a movie scene of like a yeah. neighborhood in here, yeah. you know? Um, so let's talk about like some of the other amenities in the area. So. Right now we're in school district 11. Yep. So that means you're gonna have in district choices uh, like Steel Elementary, um, Culebra, um, Man Middle School, a um, couple other middle schools in there I can't think of. D11 is a huge district. It is. Uh, you got Palmer High School, Coronado High School, some massive schools here in the area, um, and then some other amenities. So. Another really convenient thing about this neighborhood right here, what are we super close to? Yeah, we're like literally just walking down wood. There's a giant hospital right there. It's Penrose. Yeah. Now, generally speaking, going to the hospital sucks, yeah. but it is really convenient that it's right there. There's also a couple of rehab, major rehab centers really, really close by. Mm -hmm. um, and so just having and that- When you say rehab centers. Uh, yeah. Rehabilitation like, um, like PT, like yeah, physical therapy yeah. type rehab centers. Not like drug type rehab centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I'm sure that those are somewhere. Somewhere around. Somewhere, I don't know where. Yeah. Um, but that's, it, it is like super convenient and super nice. And by the way, bonus note, um, it also makes this kind of downtown area one that's really pretty awesome for midterm rentals. Yeah. There's a lot of midterm rentals down here. So fully furnished um, spaces that you can move into. And you know, like the traveling nurse thing that's like really, really popular down here. Yeah. Again, right next to the college, right next to a couple of the hospitals that are down here. So that yeah. is actually a pretty nice thing. And then and you could like line scooter yeah. to the downtown area or, or get a, oh, there's yeah. not a lot of Ubers in Colorado Springs. No, it's which kinda is weird. Kind of weird and kind of sad. Yeah. Um, Ubers tend to be like 20 minutes away. This is a total tangent. Ubers tend to be like 20 minutes away and yes, they tend to cost a lot. 
yeah. because they're driving you all the way across town, it seems like, and there's just not yeah. that many. Yeah. Um, but again, that's a, kind of a nice thing about the downtown area is if you're living down here, this is where, this is where like the, like they said earlier, this is where the nightlife activity is. This is where the restaurant activity is. This is where there's a lot of good recreation. Like mm -hmm. people come to the downtown area just to spend yeah. an afternoon or Monument a full day. Valley Park is right yep. there, like right next to the creek, pickleball courts, a community pool center, like beautiful, beautiful parks, volleyball court, walking trails, all that right next to like Monument Creek, which is kind of like our river walk here. Um, so it's just, it's kind of a neighborhood that kind of has everything, but you are, you're paying a pretty penny to be in this neighborhood for sure. You are you know? paying a pretty penny. Absolutely. But that's the old North End. This has generally been it, but we're gonna pass it over to Francis to show you that last little park, just so that you can kind of see one more outdoor space that we've been talking about. Yes. And then, uh, and so you can figure out if kind of the downtown area is the right space for you. Yeah. All right. So you've seen downtown, you've seen the restaurants, the nightclubs, you've seen the old North End, the Pioneer Museum. So hopefully this gave you a little bit better idea of what it's like to live here in downtown Colorado Springs, where all the action is at. There was way more things that we weren't able to pack into this video. So if you are curious about what it's really like to live here in downtown, definitely be sure to give us a shout. All of our contact information is in the description below. Once again, we are Explore Colorado Springs. We thank you for watching this video, but we'll see you on the next neighborhood tour. For now, peace.